Welcome to Saturday. We made it through another week and hopefully we'll be together soon. Our text today is coming from Psalm 18. It's one of my favorite Psalms and the backstory of this is it's from King David and he also wrote it in 2 Samuel chapter 22. I challenge you to read that. I'm not going to read all of Psalm 18. I want you to do that. And so part of your homework is to just spend some time going through this. Psalm 18 when God decides to move, look out, he's moving. And that's what you'll discover in Psalm 18, how God moved in the life of David and how he benefited David and how he protected David. And so I challenge you to, to do some homework and spend some time in 2 Samuel 22 and, and read all of Psalm 18. Okay, so again, this is a praise from David. And um, so, so let's begin. We'll talk, take off in verse 1. We're going to read verses 2, 3, and 4. And I'm going to throw in a picture here as we go through. Okay, so, so Psalm 18, 1. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. It's interesting to me that David, in a couple verses here, uses several different names for God. And this, I love you, Lord, is Yahweh. It is the eternal one, the self-existing one. It, it is Jehovah. And so he's saying to Jehovah, uh, um, I love you. You are my strength. And then verse 2, he repeats it. The Lord, Yahweh, is my rock. David uses this term rock, this metaphor rock, about 20 times in the Psalms to refer to God, this unmovable rock. And, and so this is one of those times where he uses it a couple times in, in this verse. The Lord, Yahweh, is my rock, my fortress, and my Savior, my God. Now, this is a different name. This is the proper name for God. It's El. This is the Almighty. So he says, the Lord, Yahweh, is my rock, my fortress, and my Savior. And the Almighty is my rock in whom I find protection. Now, I want you to look at this picture that, that's in front of you. This is Masada. And now I can't prove this. But I do believe that this is where David went in the wilderness and he found protection. And it's super high. It's well defended. And so I can envision David as he's writing this song, this praise song to God. And he's calling the Almighty his rock, his fortress, his savior, the one that he finds protection and the the shield over him, uh, the place of safety. I, I, I can envision that David associated that together, and it's far better th than we could imagine how we find a place of safety. David is turning to Almighty God, the eternal Jehovah, as his one that is brings safety in his fortress and his rock. And, and so let, let's go on. Verse 3 says, I called on the Lord who was worthy of praise, and he saved me from my enemies. Now, these first three verses are awesome. I mean, it's God is our rock and our fortress and our protector and our savior. and All, all of these things that describes God. But I want to read verse 4 just to set up the homework. This is verse 4. And if you want to see how God moved, it is an incredible picture from King David after this verse. This is what verse 4 says. The ropes of death entangled me. Floods of destruction swept over me. Now, I, I, destruction and death, are that's how David describes his situation and his plight. Now, I don't know how you're feeling today, but if you need a boost in your mental health, if you need a boost in your faith, if you need a boost to try to help keep your heart open, I cannot challenge you enough to read the rest of Psalm 18. And you're going to see when God was ready to move, man, did he move. And these are the things that he did for David. And I believe it's the same things that God, Almighty God, the eternal Jehovah, can do for you and he can do it for me. So keep your faith strong. Keep your heart open. Let's pray together. Father, here we are at the end of another week. It's different. We're just living life differently.
I praise you that you're our fortress. I praise you that you're our rock. I praise you that you're our savior. I praise you that you're our shield, that you protect us. You are so much better at this than we are. I'm grateful that we are connected to you and we have the opportunity to connect to you. I pray, Father, for people's mental health. I pray for their fears. I pray that the faith is way bigger than the fear. I pray for those around us that are affected by this thing. I remind you of Jim McKee, who's been diagnosed with this virus. I pray for our frontline people that are receiving those who are fearful or afraid or are sick. I pray that you protect all of us in an incredible way. God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you're going to do. And when you move, Father, we want to be right in the middle of it. We, we want to take this journey with you as you are taking this journey with us. I praise you for who you are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Keep the faith. Keep your heart open. Take courage. God is right there with you. God bless you.